Shimano pedals are some of the most popular mountain bike pedals out there, and today I'm going to go over how to clean, regrease, and rebuild several different pairs, including this pair that's totally cooked. So the first thing you'll need to do is remove the pedal body from the spindle. And the pedal body, what looks like a nut at the end of the pedal body, turns to loosen and tighten the same direction as the spindle. So if you're trying to figure out which way you need to turn that nut in order to get the pedal body off, you turn it the same direction that you would turn the pedal to take it in and out of the crank. So if you're looking at it from the spindle side, the drive side pedal is going to loosen to the right. If your pedal's in really good shape, spinning nicely and you're not having any issues, you can just clean it up Fill the pedal body full of grease, make sure you get all the dirt out of the body and off of the spindle, and then shove that spindle back in there and the excess grease will push any dirt and grime out of there. So you kind of want to put too much grease inside the pedal body and then as you tighten it through it'll shove all that new grease through the system and clean it out and afterward your pedal should work great. If instead your pedal's feeling a little crunchy and you need to fully take it apart, uh, that's what this next chunk of the video is for. So you'll need to take that nut off the end that kind of holds everything together, holds the preload nut in place. And this whole disassembly and cleaning process works the same for larger trail pedals or these smaller XC style pedals. The wider trail style pedals have a bushing in between to take up the extra space of the platform, but they function exactly the same. So as soon as that first nut is taken off, you can remove the preload nut. And this is where you'll want to be kind of careful because the bearings will start falling out. Uh, it's good to do this over a piece of carpet or a towel to catch any of the bearings that might fall out. And at this point, you can see where the bearings are inside that bearing race sleeve. And then at this point, you can pull the sleeve off. Some bearings might start falling out and there is an, a plastic internal race that will slide out as well. It kind of works as both a bushing and a bearing race combined. And you want to pay attention to which direction all of those things go when you take them off so you can get them back on in the right order and lay them out in order accordingly. Make sure to peel all of the bearings out of both sides of the races. There should be 11 per side unless you've lost some or they've crum crumbled up. And if you do need to replace any of them, your local bike shop should have 330 seconds bearings that you can pick up pretty cheap. I like to use chopsticks to get the bearings out and to kind of get in the little corners of the bearing races to get everything cleaned. Um, I mean, they're free and they're easy to replace. Then the next step is just to clean everything and I won't belabor this point. Uh, I'm sure you know how to clean things if you're watching this video, so go ahead and just make sure that all of the grease and grime is off of every single little piece. Um, I like to use white vinegar to clean the grease off. It seems to work pretty well and it's not toxic. But whatever you use, just make sure to get all of the grime out of there. In order to get the bearings clean, you can put them in a paper towel, fold it, and roll them back and forth until all of the old grease and dirt is gone. From there, you can slide that crappy rubber gasket back on that doesn't do much. Then drench the spindle in grease and slide that thing that originally looked like a nut before you took it off back on. That's going to hold the pedal body in place. Now the curvature inside that sleeve you just slid on is going to pair with the curves in the spindle to make bearing races for this first set of bearings. So now you can set the first 11 bearings into the grease. And that grease should act like glue to hold them in place while you work. It's worth taking your time with this step as the ball bearings are pretty easy to lose. And using a magnetized screwdriver to move them around helps quite a bit. You can see here that I slide the cylinder into place until the bearing races match up, so there's plenty of room for all 11 bearings. With all 11 bearings in place, you can slide that cylinder up the spindle a little bit, and you should see all of the bearings kind of fall into their seat. Next, you'll want to slide that plastic ring back on, and you'll want to slide it with the convexed side facing out, away from the bike. The outer edge of that piece of plastic will help the second set of bearings stay in place. Now you can slide that other cylinder on, which has races on either side of it for both sets of bearings. And you'll be able to kind of snug that first set of bearings in place with those two sets of races there to keep them from sliding out of their socket. Next, go ahead and fill that other side with fresh grease so you can stick all the other bearings in. 
There are 11 ball bearings on this side as well, and you'll want to be careful that you don't let those two cylinders slide around too much because now the bearings are kind of in place and you don't want to really mess that up and have to redo it. And finally, it's time to put that first preload nut back on. You should be able to tighten this down with just your fingers until the sleeve that the bearings are seated in doesn't move in either direction, and that's tight enough. Finally, reinstall the little locking nut and tighten the two against each other, trying not to tighten the preload nut as you don't want to get the bearings overly tight. Finally, I like to add a bunch of marine grease to the spindle once everything's cleaned up and greased internally. Put a whole bunch on the outside, put a bunch of grease on the inside of the pedal body jam them together, there will be some excess grease wasted, but with no room for water in there, your rebuild job should last hopefully a whole season. Now you can tighten the pedal body back onto the spindle, give it a good strong tug, I think it's maybe 10 newton meters, wipe off any excess grease and you should be good to go. There are a few extra details and a list of this process on singletracks.com with an article attached to this video. So if you feel like anything's missing, maybe check there and you should have all the details you'll need.